Hello, I'm Daisuke Ugaeri, the CEO of Tokyo Marine America. The purpose of Tokyo Marine America's operation is to protect the business and the lives of our clients by providing safety and security. To achieve the purpose, we think it's important to provide ongoing support for loss prevention and mitigation, as well as early recovery, recurrence prevention, rather than just providing financial coverage. As an insurance company, we see many tragic accidents. We want to decrease these incidents as much as possible, especially the number of auto accidents. That's why Tokyo Marine America is partnering with NDD, whose mission is to reduce auto crashes caused by disrupted driving. NDD was founded by Mr. Joel Herdman, whose daughter Keishi was killed in a disrupted driving accident in 2009. Mr. Feldman aims to end disrupted driving to decrease car accidents. Tokemani is proud to join the mission, and as a part of our partnership, we are motivated to introduce NDD to our clients. This partnership with NDD is one of our many offerings of loss prevention and mitigation for auto accidents. Unfortunately, Many car accidents are caused by drivers' carelessness and lack of recognition for safe driving. We hope this introduction to NDD will help the drivers in your company be more aware of the dangers of disruptive driving. Please feel free to contact us if you would like to know more about NDD, auto loss prevention, and auto loss mitigation. I really appreciate the opportunity to work with Tokyo Marine on this project. Tokyo Marine has been a great partner in terms of、uh, saving lives, reducing distracted driving crashes. From this slide, you can see that I believe we need to change the way we think about distracted driving. So, how do we presently think about distracted driving? Well, isn't it a lot like this? It's okay when I do it. I'm a great driver. I can handle it. I've never been in a crash. But boy, we don't like it when we see someone in the car next to us driving distracted, right? Isn't that, isn't that how it is? Well, that's probably why when you look at these stats, you can see that we haven't done anything in terms of lowering the number of people killed or injured on our highways. Every year, like clockwork, we kill 3,000 of us and we're injuring nearly 400,000. So why haven't we been able to change driving behaviors? Let me tell you about、um, why I changed the way I drive. This is a picture of my daughter, Casey. Casey was killed by a distracted driver. A 58 year old man made a choice to reach for his GPS. He took his eyes off the road. He rolled through a stop sign. Casey was a pedestrian. He hit her. He said that he never saw her. And we got the call to go to the hospital. And we were told four hours later that Casey was dead. It shouldn't have to take a tragedy for each and every one of us to give up our driving distractions. So, from this survey, you can see that our biggest highway safety concern today is distracted driving, more so than aggressive, drugged, or drunk drivers. Yet, 50 to 60% of us, depending upon the survey, still drive distracted. So, again, this is hypocrisy, right? It's okay when we drive distracted. But we don't want other people to drive distracted. We most fear people who drive distracted, yet we drive distracted. In this clip, the white SUV you're seeing coming towards you is a distracted driver. The other two cars are stopping for a red light. The car coming from the right, the black car, had the right of way. But look what happened to him. He had the right of way, but he got clobbered. He got clobbered. And this is just another view of the same crash from a different camera. This is a big hit. Maybe, just maybe, we should put our phones down, even if we haven't yet been in a crash, because we need to do so to protect ourselves from all the other distracted drivers on the road. We need to be defensive drivers. Defensive driving is a conscious effort to reduce risks associated with driving. Now, what does that really mean? Well, we're going to scan the road, but we're going to make predictions. We're going to predict that if we have the green light, Although the people coming from the side have to have the red light, they are not going to stop. We're suspicious of everyone. If we're suspicious of everyone, then we can protect ourselves. We can go slower, 
We can watch them. We're in a position to identify a risk and then make decisions and execute appropriate responses. During the pandemic, I did talks with a young man. His story was simple. He was pretty much like the driver of the black car. He had the right of way, a distracted driver hit him in the passenger side and killed his best friend. He later told me that at the time his best friend was killed, he wasn't looking at the road, he was looking at his phone. And he knows that he had the last best chance to have prevented the crash, and if he did so, his friend would still be alive. This eats him up every single day, as it would you, all of you. We need to be defensive drivers, and we can't be defensive drivers if we're looking at our phones. The next video I'm going to play is a bus driver, and I want you to just think, as you're watching this, some of your reactions. How would you describe a person who takes chances and risks like this? These are some of the typical reactions that we get. I show this to adults, they have one set of responses. I show it to students, they're totally different, totally different. Same video, totally different responses. Adults are talking about it being dangerous. I knew distracted driving was dangerous, yet I did it anyway. Many of us who know distracted driving is dangerous do it anyway. I guess we don't think it's dangerous when we do it, right? The students, though, are personalizing this. That driver is selfish. That driver is irresponsible. That driver is disrespectful. If we think about distracted driving in that manner, like the kids do, then we're going to get somewhere. Because think about, compare it to drunk driving. We don't drive drunk because, well, it's socially unacceptable. If we or the people that we were with felt that distracted driving was irresponsible and selfish, we'd be less likely to do it. That's how we change the way we think about distracted driving. The kids have it right. We have to think about it the way they do. So why do we do it? Why do we do it? Well, we're in the courtroom. The man who killed Casey is taken away and his wife comes up to me and she talks with me. And in that conversation, she tells me he only looked away for a few seconds. My daughter is dead because he only looked away for a few seconds. It's meaningless. It's meaningless. Each and every one of these excuses has thousands and thousands of lives attached to it. Deaths because of these excuses. These are the excuses that each and every one of us use. If you think about it, you've probably used these. The next time you try to use one of these excuses, I now want you to think about each and every one of these excuses having thousands and thousands of deaths attached to them. Now, Casey's favorite color was pink. You know, you can see these pink wristbands that we have here in her memory. I'll show you on my wrists. I have lots of wristbands, all representing dead family members, lives that were lost due to distracted driving. And I could look at each and every one of these and I could tell you, this one was killed because of just a few seconds. This one was killed because they thought they were a safe driver. This one was killed because everyone does it. When you think about these excuses, I want you to think about those wristbands and all the lives lost because of those excuses. So what do we do? Hey, if we hear our phones while we're driving, we're going to grab them. We need to avoid temptations. Uh, do not disturb while driving is on the iPhone. It's called focus driving on the Android. It's something very similar. Do not drive settings. If we set those, once we start moving, we no longer have those distractions. We no longer have those distractions. We need to avoid those distractions. If we avoid those distractions, then we're going to be safe. So each of us has the power to choose to be distraction free, to drive without distraction. And we can also change the way those we care about drive. It's the right thing to do, to protect ourselves, our loved ones, to be defensive drivers, to respect those on the road with us. It's the right thing to do. We need to make distracted driving socially unacceptable. We need to make it socially unacceptable. Thank you so very, very much. I appreciate the opportunity to having spoken with you. And again, I appreciate the opportunity that, that Tokyo Marine has afforded me to reach you. Have a day. Nice going, kid. One more. One more. And All right, listen, I'm sorry. We got to rock and roll. I got to pick up your sister. Pick up my glove while you're at it. We'll, we'll come back next week. 
Hey, mother's calling. Hold on a second. Yeah. No, I know. No, we're heading there now. Listen, somebody else is calling in. Let me just see who this is. Dad! Dad! Yeah. Yeah, I'm ready. I sure am. All right, let's do this.